Now D'Lo, boom. This play right here goes a long way on the fact that one minute into the game, you come off a ball screen, one of your most frequent actions, and you draw a foul by an over-aggressive defender. So what this is going to do to Desmond Bain go out the rest of the way, he's going to, under his aggression, he's going to play these screens honestly, and he's not going to try to jump these screens because he's aware that D'Lo would be able to draw a foul if he tries to be aggressive on this screen. Davis hands it off to Russell, guarded by Moran. Now, boom. Most games you've seen throughout the series, D'Lo's first jumper ain't go down, but this game, his first jumper went down. But notice to the type of shots he's going to take after these in the result of those jumpers. Then boom. Next shot, floater. He didn't fall in love with the jumper. But peep, D'Lo's pace is something that's impeccable. And so right here in these situations, he hits that little skip. That's very slow skip. So as a defender, Jaws going to see this and say, oh, he's going slow. I already know where he's about to go. But psych. Nah, he ain't going that way. He's about to go counter the other way. Because D'Lo's only slowing down so he could be able to make the reads and counter. D'Lo slows down, boom, counters the other way, puts Ja in jail, then gets in the paint, gets to his float game. And boom, right here, third shot. He tried to get a foul, I believe so. It seemed as if he tried to get that foul. He followed it up, but he missed it. So that shot right there is a little more force than those other ones. And boom, D'Lo. He had the other midi. He missed that. Now he's getting to pick and roll. He threw a turnover. He's still playing through the turnovers, though. Right? He played great. But a ton of turnovers. A lot of deflections. But regardless, he's still playing through the turnovers. Because we know the game that he had. But a lot of players will let these players like this be able to drop their aggression. But on D'Lo's hand, he's not going to drop his aggression. He's going to start making the right decision. Simple as that. So, boom. Pull up three. Force three. But now he's come back here. All right, I'm not going to force this three. I'm going to get back around the rim, get to my flow game, see another easy one go down. Right? This point. Three for five from the field. And now, boom, he gets, he gets another leg. Right? But let me break down the setup to you right quick, though. So you see this first dribble, right? First dribble, eats up space between him and Ja because he starts all the way from the logo. But on that first dribble, he stops, changes the rhythm of this dribble. And then what does this do to Ja as well? It stops Ja because he's reacting to D'Lo. And now, boom, he takes his next two dribbles. He's in and outs to get by. And now since Ja is at a stop and D'Lo has closed up this gap between them, it's easier for him to take these next couple of dribbles and these steps for him to get by Ja. So now he gets to his left, gets that lay, gets that down after forcing the jumper. Late pass by Rui, but forget what he did. I'm going to still keep playing. I'm going to get to my spots, right? And so what does he do now? He made two shots around the rim, and then he got to another jumper. Instead of trying to cons consistently force that jumper and take jumpers until the jumper goes down, he takes shots around the rim to then be allow himself to knock down those jumpers. Because like I said before, knocking down those jumpers are going to allow you to feel good. And when you shoot shots that feel good, those are usually going to be the ones that end up going down. And by the way, make sure you subscribe, like, and turn on notifications because we drop breakdown videos daily. And if you want to catch my breakdowns live, make sure you go hit that link in the description, go follow, and let's get right back to it. Great way to build his rhythm out the gate. And now he's still working on defense, chasing over the top of the screen, still working hard, not laying down. And still, this action with AD, but what really allowed him to get this dime, though, is where he places the ball off the catch of the handoff. He comes right here, right? He knows it's a switch. So most times it's going to be a switch. You're going to try to throw some sort of pass over the top. So he keeps that ball up here, and so it's, he's ready to fire it as soon as he sees a gap open up. And then boom, he hits AD. Boom, switch on to Jaron Jackson. Huh. Fooled him again. So he got the switch on to Jaron Jackson. And right now, he gets himself into attack mode. He puts his head down. He begins to operate as if he's going to isolate Jaron Jackson and get himself a bucket as the shot clock begins to go down. But all this right here is just only to deceive Desmond Bain and Ja and allow AD to get to a point where he could just safely throw that live pass he could finish. So boom, peep, Bain. Ja, they're just watching the ball. They're not thinking that he's going to throw this ball to AD because he's in attack mode. And boom, the whole time, he's not even reading Jaron Jackson. He's reading the help. And then he throws that over the top to AD. Then boom, AD covering the paint. Let's let this play finish out. Let this play finish out. Braun take it all the way, get an and one. 
But what really separates AD as a defender is that he's able to take on contact and then go back and contest the shot without fouling. Tillman dives. He thinks that bump's going to take out Anthony Davis from being able to get a block. No, it doesn't. AD's still recovering. I don't know if he blocked. I don't know if he got a tip on that, but he definitely altered the shot as if it was a block. It may be even better than a block because the ball didn't go out of bounds. It stayed in bounds. So now instead of them getting that ball right back with the same shot clock they had before, they're taking that ball and going to the other side, playing in transition. And boom, D'Lo once again. That's a great attack. Unfortunately, he ended up losing that ball right there. Got the turnover, but peep the timing of his attack. Look at y'all. Turned his head. Looks back, turns his head once again, but turns it back even further because he turns his head one time and doesn't see anything, so he goes back even further. So D'Lo's seeing Ja, and he's like, okay, I'm going to go. He attacks. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make a play off this. He turned it over, but he had a great night, and he was still playing through these turnovers. You got to play through these turnovers as a player. You can't allow these turnovers to get to your head. You got to keep going and understand that if you did make a bad decision, fix the decision next time you go down. If a play like this does happen, it's just unfortunate. Forget about it. Keep on going. Next play mentality. You can't let these turnovers and these plays and these bad plays limit how great you play. And you can't allow yourself to be defined as how good you are as a player by your last play. Then D'Lo also guarding. Next play down, he got the steal. Next play down, he got the steal. When I tell you, you're going from offense to defense, you can't allow those pass plays to dictate what you do. You got to make sure you make your next play your best play and make sure that you take your worst play and take that loss and turn it into a lesson. You got you to gotta shift your mentality on these plays. Boom, once again, hand check, opportunity to get a foul. Mm, great play by D'Lo. Great play by D'Lo. He used that ball to manipulate Dylan Brooks to get him out of his base and so he could just go and attack. So, Pete, he knows the action over here was going on. AD on the roll, right? So, Dylan Brooks going to think, okay, he's going to try to throw this over the top to AD, right? He just holds that ball up to get Dylan Brooks off his feet and make him think he's going to throw that pass. Then, boom, no, he's going to attack. Hand, use his hand, off arm to get by, and then a little finesse around the rim to be able to find that foul and get that ball up at the same time. Then, boom. The drop coverage defender. If you allow them to get behind you, you're cooked. If you let them get behind you, you may even end up getting put on a poster like you're going to see a little later. So, boom, Tillman. AD got behind you way too early. You got Your priorities got to be this player can't get behind me. Because you get behind them, players like AD, anybody in this league, you throw that pass over the top, it's a lob, and you're trying to jump backwards and get a hand on that ball? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. You're going to see later. Now AD gets that and one because he's trying to jump backwards into him. Now it's the start of halftime, right? Lakers got a 17-point lead cut down to 14 right here on this jaw three. But this right here is really what is able to prohibit the run by Memphis and not allow them to come back. And all starts with D'Lo as well. D'Lo coming in here, ready to shoot. Boom, swing pass, knockdown. And then boom, hit that first one. Boom, a second one. Dylan Brooks guarding him start this half. <laughs> And got shit on him. That might be the reason why D'Lo started cooking in the second half as well. He started going crazy. He got Dylan Brooks on him. And so now, boom, even Pete. He going back and he talking crazy to Dylan Brooks. <laughs> A minute 15 into this quarter, you got D'Lo talking crazy to Dylan Brooks. You try to put him, you try to switch the matchup up or something. Dylan Brooks not even touching him either. Braun was already tough as it is. Now you try to put him on D'Lo. Good luck. And mind you, Vando been knocking down some shots. Vando been knocking down some shots. And that's something that you learn about your teammates over practice through your preparation. Because you may realize, oh, shit, this guy could really shoot. But it may just be something mental. Now the Lakers have given him the confidence to take these shots. And so now Vando has been knocking down shots. So sometimes your mistakes as a shooter may not always be in your mechanics. It may just lie within you mentally. That's where you got to really question yourself. You really got to look yourself in the mirror and understand what it is as to why I shoot bad. Because if you constantly try to change your form and think it's your form, basketball is a two-way street. It, go it operates physically and it's mentally. And it may even be more mental on the fact that everything you do physically starts mentally as a thought. So you got to make sure your mental is right and then make sure your mental is right. Then you get the physicals right. Now D'Lo once again. Patience. Patience is playing this game, man. 
And what he really did right here that a lot of players forget to do on these pick and rolls is that little nudge. So boom, right there. You see that little nudge. So he could force jaw even lower and more into that screen. And it's not no arm extension, it's just shoulder and your leg stepping into him. So that boom, they could drop back a little bit and it forces them more into that screen and harder to get over. Something you can add to your pick and roll that if you do add it, it's gonna make the pick and roll, I promise, five, 10 times easier. And then boom. This is why I really knew the Grizzlies were out of it. They had Josh settling for threes. Catch and shoot threes. Lift and drift threes from the corners, from the wings. I was like, damn, they're really done. AD really got intimidated Hall of Fame on this paint. And nobody even want to touch it no more. Not even Josh himself. The person who's the highest flyer in the league don't even want to get into the paint no more, man. That's tough. Josh's got to add to his bag, I'm telling you. Then boom, Vando once again, knocked down again. He'd been doing it over the past few games. Something mentally. They started giving him the confidence to take these shots. Now he got the confidence. Now he's knocking him down. Now the mechanics are working because he got the mental right. Now D'Lo, he got another spur in him. Not just those first two to start. Boom, and Desmond Bain grill. Don't matter. He's hot at this point. Ain't much shit you could do now. Now he gets another one. Another one back to back. Off an of offensive rebound, ain't no better time to shoot a three than an offensive rebound. That's tough. Like I was saying before, if you're a player playing that drop, you can't allow that player rolling to get behind you because the second that you do, you might be cooked. You might get your ass boomed on, especially if you're at the pro level, league level, college even. There's a lot of players who will fly through there. Even high school nowadays, a lot of kids be eating some crazy shit. So everybody be having bounce in this motherfucker. So if you allow that player to get behind you, boom, they throw that lob, you cooked. At this point, he eating dirt. Hey, this shit was really bad on the fact that <laughs> Even when Anthony Davis was not in the paint being a shock blocker, when he was out this play, Ja still couldn't score. AD got a strip. That's crazy. Look, AD, Ja think he had a sweep. Ooh, Euro, I can get to my leg. Roy Hachimura not going to touch me. He ain't going to be able to block me. AD gets a strip. God damn, he had this whole paint on lock. Mm. Brown tried to fire that in. Couldn't get through. Mind you, they're up 30. The Lakers are up 30. Anthony Davis has absolutely no real reason to go and hustle for this loose ball. On the fact that they're up 30, he's injury prone. If he hits that floor, every single Lakers fan is holding their breath. But yet he still dies for this loose, loose ball to save it up 30 with only about 15 and a half minutes left in this game. This just shows their mentality and who really wants to win this game right now. AD had, he had no absolute reason to go and die for the loose ball. Falls on the floor. Everybody loves it. That's the end of that right there. 